Question. Can I empty or refill from two specific points with this kit? First thing, this kit is for a single float switch monitoring. There are two inputs on the board, but this one is designed only to work with a single switch, kit two. So it's only going to monitor a single point on the tank. So if you want it to start refilling at a certain point, so if you want, for example, the tank to start refilling when the water level reaches here, and to top it up to here, you need a different kit. This one cannot do it. Uh, kit one has that capability, and kit three has the ability to manage draining a tank to a certain level. But this kit, kit two, only monitors a single point. Question. Does power go through the board to the relay, and how do I power my device? So over here you have got your connections going either to your pump, your solenoid, or whatever else you've got on here. You can have a table lamp connected to this, it doesn't matter. Obviously, if we're working with mains voltage, we're not gonna have this open when we've got water right here. All of this kit here right now is running off 12 volts. You cannot put mains voltage into these green connectors here. These connectors here, 12 volts DC goes into the top. We're using a small wheelchair battery to power that. That's 12 volts lead acid battery. It's about the size of a house brick but you don't need one that big. Um, and you can have the battery connected up to a solar panel if you wish. But this side here, even if you're switching mains voltage on this side, only ever put 12 volt DC in this side. We have had people power these kits before using a small nine volt battery. That's a PP3, the same as they put in a smoke alarm. But we don't recommend that because that's quite a small battery and the voltage is on the low side. This board is supposed to have 12 volts. It has got polarity protection, flywheel protection, and other various protection features built into the board itself, but we'd recommend using either a small car battery, a leisure battery, or either a 12 volt transformer or some other stable power source to run the kit. On this side, you can wire whatever you like, as long as you don't exceed 30 amps switching capacity on the relay. So you can have a pump connected up to this, um, it could be a 12 volt pump, it could be a mains voltage pump, or any other voltage as long as you don't exceed 250 volts. Question. What is the basic idea of this single point monitoring kit? So, as you can see, we've got the three lights on the bottom. This kit is currently monitoring the tank. We've got some movement here and we've also got water draining out, which is why this one is switching on and off um, at various different points. And as this is a ripple correction kit, um, it's going to prevent the pump from switching on and off excessively. So it's only going to turn it on and off when it feels appropriate. Question. Can I use this kit to manage the water level or pump in an aquarium or water feature? Now, another utilization of this tank, you can actually use this as a water feature on its own. And if too much water splashes out of the water feature, then it'll turn off. So all you'd have to do is put the pump in the same tank as where the water pump is going and put some fancy head on there. And then you'd rotate the float switch so that it's the other way up. I'm just going to do that now. So very easy to rotate the switch. You can see I just loosen it turn the switch over and then tighten it up again and now this one is going to run and the water will pass through continually there's nowhere else the water can go and so you end up with a system which is just going to run through a spout and make a very attractive display for whatever is needed so if we turn this on by making sure there's enough water in the tank um, the water will flow through continuously and then you can just put a nice head on there you can have this going over some rocks, wherever you like. You can have this for aerating a fish tank, it doesn't matter, as long as there's enough water, because if the water level drops, it's going to turn off the pump. There's not enough in there, as you can see I just dropped the flow switch down, so that is now saying there's not enough. And once the pump is active, it will just loop through continuously, so in this demo, the pump is just taking water out of the tank and putting it back into the same tank. The pump is here and we're just looping that through and back into the top and it's just going to continue doing that until this decides that there's not enough water in the tank. So if for example the water is evaporating 
or it's being splashed, or there's a leak in the system somewhere, we want to protect the pump. As soon as there's not enough water in there, for example, we use a spillover, some of it's getting spilt, or we've got water being lost in the system somehow, it's going to turn off the pump. Question. Why doesn't the power I put in the supply side come out of the terminal on the right side? Because a lot of people wire their pump into um, normally open and com, positive, negative. And the simple answer is the float switch is isolated from the power going into the board because the power going in doesn't necessarily match what you're trying to switch. And the power going in might not carry enough amperage to control what you're switching. So we keep these two circuits separate and then you can wire whatever you like into here. So if you're working with mains voltage, you'd have a separate line going in here with its own fuse going straight into common and then you'd have your power, such as your live or your neutral, going to your pump and the other one would be directly connected. Lastly, in troubleshooting, do you have any tips on what I should check first in my installation if my system is not working the way I wanted it to? So, you think the product's faulty or you think that it's not switching properly, if the blue light's coming on and you can hear the relay click but your pump is not turning on, then there's a problem in your wiring either through here or your direct wiring going to the pump. So the first thing you want to check is there's actually power coming from the cables. Now do that using a meter and make sure you isolate things before plugging them in. Uh, look for breaks in the line. Don't touch this stuff when your hand is wet, whether it's low voltage or not, is dangerous. So make sure you observe the safety instructions whenever you're working with electricity, especially if you're also working with water. On this scenario here, we've got power going in here. We know power's going in there because the light's red. So if the light's red here and the blue light is coming on but your pump isn't working, check the power going to the pump, check your wiring and connections on here, consult the manual, and otherwise, it'll be the pump itself, maybe check the fuse that came with the pump. Another thing you can look for is your pump is continually running but doesn't seem to be doing anything. You want to check the hose. The connections to the pump are actually secure. You should always connect pipe clamp to your pump. On this pump, as you can see, we've got a very loose connection because this is just a demonstration video, so we have just loosely pushed this one onto our pump like that. Okay, so that's all of our frequently asked questions for this week. If you have a question that we have not covered, please leave it in the comment section below and we will do what we can to answer it next time. In the meantime, if you could please like this video, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already. Loads of stuff coming up. See you next time.